Good morning. Um, thank you for um, the applause. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I welcome you to join me in a conversation as I tell you a little bit about an organization and a group of young ladies that have changed my life over the last 12 months. And our organization, as Anya said, is called Black Girls Code. Our focus is introducing girls of color to technology in all forms and creating the leaders and the creators of tomorrow. Today, I wanted to speak to you. Um, let me get the name of the slide to come back. On cracking the code, technology and girls of color. We feel at Black Girls Code that the most effective revolutions occur not by using guns or bombs, but in the mind. We feel that Black Girls Code is a revolution. It is a movement, and the revolution will be digitized. So take a look for a brief moment at our story. Through the tireless work of modern pioneers, in truly the superpower working on in the fields of pure science to reveal more of the mysteries of the universe. On the surface, is, it's exactly what it says, which is black girls code. They're learning how to code web pages and code programs for robots. So it's that in a literal sense, but figuratively, is I think it's a way that we move forward into the future with how we do things, how we innovate, how we bring our essence back to dominant culture because right now our narrative is kind of left out of the story. Just to say the word black girls is revolutionary. Black Girls Code is revolutionary. We feel that teaching girls to co of color to program is a revolutionary idea. Our goal and our mission is to change the face of technology, one girl at a time. The girls that you saw in the video are these young ladies. This is the new face of technology. But not too long ago, although it may seem that way um, by looking at me, I was those girls. So to start, I'll have to start at the beginning with my story. I grew up in a little small town, but urban, of Memphis, Tennessee, at a time during the 80s when technology and the push to get women involved in STEM was at its height. I was very lucky because growing up in the inner city of Memphis, Tennessee, I didn't know what an engineer looked like. I couldn't throw a rock as I can now in Silicon Valley and find an engineer in my neighborhood. I literally had no clue, but I was really one of the lucky ones that had that application in math and science that led my guidance counselors to push me into the field of engineering through my career in computer science and electrical engineering to studies undergraduate. So that is where my path led me. And for the past 20 plus years, I found myself often one of the only women, and most definitely one of the only women of color in many different industries, from chemicals to manufacturing to industrial biotech, but not really finding too many folks that look like me. So at the end of 2010, I decided to take a leap of faith out. I lived in the valley, the hub of innovation, and to really take a move into starting my own tech company. But to my dismay, I found the same fact was uh, the same atmosphere in that industry, which was growing and booming in our area. Not many women of color, not many women at all. But I think that for me, really, the impetus for starting Black Girls Code was the convergence of both heart and mind. So from the mind, of course, I saw no woman that looked like me. And I didn't think that that was the way um, the industry could grow and thrive at its best. But also, as a mom, I was really um, tasked with encouraging a young lady who was interested in tech, that tech came easy to. But there were no, again, mentors and folks that helped her to feel that that was a place that she belonged. So I think the convergence of both heart and mind was what birthed Black Girls Code. So in 2011, 
we decided in April to found an organization to solve this problem, to drive girls of color into the pipeline. We started out with a very small team of two or three individuals in a little section of San Francisco called Bayview Hunters Point. We started with classes in open source software using Scratch and Alice and really training these girls that had no idea of what computer science was, how to program. But then something happened in 2012. We decided to take this program on the road with the ambitious goal of training 200 girls of color computer programming in seven cities in 90 days. We started, of course, in Oakland, San Francisco. And we were overwhelmed to see over 80 girls attend one of our workshops when our first one had only 10. We kept moving. From there, we went to Chicago, and the same thing happened. 50 girls showed up. We weren't quite ready for that, but we kept going. Next, taking this program to Atlanta. I never thought of Atlanta as a technology hub, but we were surprised to see almost 100 girls in our first class in Atlanta. And it remains one of our top cities in terms of the growth of our program. But we kept going, heading next to Las Vegas. So in this case, what happens in Vegas doesn't necessarily stay there. <laughs> um, and it was an amazing uh, innovation move for the young women that we found in the program. We went from Vegas to Detroit, and finally to New York, and moved back, of all places, to Johannesburg, South Africa, seeing our program reach its first group of international girls. For Black Girls Code, we found that in a very short period of time, three to four months, we were able to go way past that first goal of 200 that I told you about and reach over 700 girls. And these are the faces of the new leaders in technology. So now when I talk about why Black Girls Code is important, I think it's important to go back a little bit to the beginning. If you look back into the 1960s, you'll find that computer scientists in the beginning didn't look so much different than me or many of the women in this room. Many of the very first programmers, so to speak, were women, and they programmed the first supercomputers. When things started to increase and the focus of programming started to increase um, throughout the next several decades, you found that women represented almost 35% of the degrees in CS. Even Barbie got in on the action. <laughs> but then something started to change. If you look at the slide, you'll see that although women's entry into traditional STEM fields began to increase, so when you talk about the hard sciences, hard sciences computer science took a nosedive right after the 80s. And the gap that we now call the digital divide began to widen significantly. A new paradigm emerged of what a computer scientist looked like. <laughs> and the image of the stereotypical computer geek, which is male, Anglo, began to emerge. This is around the time of the first dot-com boom. And all of the major companies that we now know and love began to take off and explode. When we started Black Girls Code, we were faced with some sobering statistics that really led us and drove us on this, down this journey. 37% of black students in California do not graduate from high school. African Americans and Latino students graduate three or, or track at least three levels below comparative white students in math and science, as well as language arts. The digital divide in communities of color is so wide. Uh, very much over 90% of our girls have no broadband access and or even access to computer equipment to continue their growth and studies in their homes. And only about 0.3% of girls elect computer science as a major when they go to college. We created Black Girls Code to address these issues and what we like to say crash that digital divide. 
Over 70% of the students that have been in our classes, after taking one workshop, say they now are interested in pursuing a career in IT once they go into college. So what is our big idea? For Black Girls Code, our idea is to train over 1 million girls of color to computer pro software programming by the year 2040. We feel that this goal is attainable and very much necessary for several reasons. Our economy is driven, and we, we see that over 80% of the jobs that will be created in the next decade will have some element of math and science. So just think about it. If over half of our population does not obtain the skill set, what does that mean for the growth of not just these girls, but our nation as a whole? It's been shown in time and time again, in study after study, that we as a nation are losing our ability to innovate. If innovation is in the minds of our young people, we owe it to ourselves and the growth of our nation to give every student, boy, girl, black, white, Asian, Latino, the skills they need to compete, contribute, and create a better future for themselves as well as the students that will follow after them. One of my very favorite quotes is by Doug Rushkoff, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. And it says, program or be programmed. I mean, this is one of the first things that I read about when I started Black Girls Code, and I was like, oh, yes, this is what I'm talking about. Um, it's important. We think that computer science should be considered the next language, just as we teach kids to do, learn Spanish, French, et cetera, in school. It is a language, and if we don't give them those skills to become creators, they're destined to be consumers, perpetual consumers, and program or be programmed speaks volumes to what that means. I'm often asked as I go um, from different city to city and talk to other folks about my experience in technology as a woman of color, what would I tell my 13-year-old self or what would I tell some of the 13-year-olds who come into our program? And sometimes I have to think about that, but not for long, because as I said before, those women and those young ladies that you saw on those screens, not too long ago they were me. So if I really had to tell them anything, I would tell them that they are powerful and beyond, they have power, infinite power beyond their perception. And I really truly believe that those young ladies are those who will change the world one girl at a time, because if you train a woman, you train a nation. Thank you.